But in the meantime, we're going to find out more about a new campaign that's working towards a change in policy in regards to bullying in the Eastern or the, sorry, the English school district. Joining me now is Dana Metcalf and Courtney Hodder, who are with MOB, otherwise known as Mothers Opposing Bullies. Welcome to Out of the Fog. It's great to have you here in studio. Thank, Thank you. you. So first off, why did you want to start this group? And Dana, I'll start with you as uh, you're the organizer. Um, I think that, you know, I mean, bullying is a very common thing in schools. Um, it has been for the last 25 years. This is nothing new. Um, children are animals just like anybody else, and they need to learn, you know, morals, values, and how to conduct themselves. Um, <clears throat> I had an incident with my son, not half as traumatic as some of the stories I've heard, but I was very disappointed in the policy and procedures. I was, um, the child was, and the incident was very much protected by the Privacy Act. Um, my, my son called me instead of a grown-up, instead of a teacher or a principal, and I found out about the incident two hours later. And to be called two hours later and to be told, I can't tell you what happened, I can't tell you with who, and I can't tell you what we're going to do about it, you know, as a, as a parent, it's quite paralyzing. It's right. very upsetting. And Courtney, I want to bring you into the conversation. What was it, um, I guess, for your own personal experience that made you want to, I guess, be a member of this particular group and look for change? Well, t uh, my child Tegan had uh, well, it was it was a severe um, case of bullying. She, you know, she was she was hurt. It was kind of more like a vicious attack, really. Um, but they never really did anything about it, and it continued to happen like day after day after day. So, for me, I just the policies that they have in place aren't doing anything. You know, something needs to change before someone gets really hurt. Now, a public forum was held on Sunday. Yep. Tell me about like, the turnout and the topics that were discussed. Um, well, we had over between 50 and 75 people. Um, it was basically our introduction to the world. There's a lot of things that come into play when you're looking at changing provincial legislation and policy and procedures. <clears throat> There's also a lot of information um, that needs to be addressed in regards to that child's human rights. You know, um, it, it specifies in the Human Rights Act that they have the ability to live free without mental and, and verbal and physical abuse, which, you know, is the Privacy Act bigger, is it not? So we were like, we, we're not really quite equipped to deal with that yet. So let's have a meet and greet, see what the level of interest is, find out what the feedback is from the community in regards to support, and start the process. So this is ground zero for us. Mm -hmm. our, next, um, our next meeting is going to be February 12th at the Ramada Inn, and it is for adults and, and parents only. And even though we're mothers of bullies, we do encourage our fathers and brothers and grandparents to attend. And parents of kids that are bullies. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because they need support too. Yeah. Right. Uh, for you, what was it like even on Sunday, knowing you know your own personal experience and then hearing from other parents who may have had a similar, uh, I guess, situation? Well, it was heartbreaking, um, but I mean, everybody basically had the same outcome. Nothing was really done, so things escalated. And I mean, unless you, you do something, that's what happens, escalation. And you, we heard a lot of really sad stories on Sunday, mm -hmm. you know? What do you say to the people who are uh, possibly saying, you know, you're overreacting or you're, you're making a big deal out of something that's not quite as big um, well, as you think? Well, to that, uh, I mean, I had to put up with a lot of Tegan coming home telling you about she's been bullied since September. Um, I never made big deals out of any of it, you know, I mean, just because, you know, Tegan had her hair pulled or something like that. I mean, girls will be girls, right? Uh, but, I mean, when a child pulls a chair out from underneath your child because she wants that chair, and when, you know, Tegan was already down, stomped on her chest, I mean, that's, that's vicious. You know, I mean, to me, that merited, you know, a suspension. A couple days off, but nothing happened. And, you know, it kind of escalated. And, I mean, we hear about this all the time. So, uh, Dan, I'm curious, because you were living in Alberta for many years, and you've been vocal about how it was different in Alberta than it is here in Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, what do you mean by that in terms of that it was different? Um, different meaning, I think, when you, when you look at bigger cities that have uh, more, more people in school, more issues for multiculturalism and religious and, and all kinds of different diversities being thrown in the mixing pot, there's definitely more of a call for bullying that happens in school. 
they have firmer policy and procedures. Like uh, I personally think if your child gets hurt in school, the teacher should notify immediately, the principal should be notified immediately, and the parent should be notified immediately. And most schools, some schools, have uh, a contract that you sign upon entry into the school that says, if your child is bullied or if your child is a bully, this is the protocol on what you can expect to happen. This is how we address it. You can sign here, and this will tell you exactly what the consequences of those actions are going to be. Now, taken in light of the Privacy Act, and parents don't really have any input as to what the course of action is, I really feel the benefits of putting something that in place makes us feel confident in our system in knowing that something is actually being addressed. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, go I'm ahead. I'm sorry, I'd like to touch on um, in regards to Courtney's situation as well as many other mothers that are out there. I want to I wanna express to people that bullying is something that does have long-term effects because it does involve harassment and physical assault. The amount of people between the ages of um, 12 and 16 that are on antidepressants, that have anxiety, that have outreached to us, that are in counseling, is staggering. And it affects them long-term. You know, they have a right to an education. Okay, so what kind of change are you hoping to see? What, you know, who are you talking to in regards to, you know, you're looking to change policy. Like you said, this is the beginning. It does take a long time. Well, um, we're, we're just collectively working on our own. Everybody is aware that what we're doing. We've talked to the, um, the president of the Parent Teachers Association. He's informed us that teachers are going off on stress leave, that they, they're having a difficult time handling the classroom, a different time delivering curriculum because of budgets. You know, he's even informed us that some teachers are wearing Kevlar to school. And, you know, that's very alarming. So our, our plan is on the 12th is to collect as much information as we can. Um, we do have a child psychologist that's working with us. And our, our hope is to put, take the work out of it for them. This is what we'd like to see happen. And this will help the teachers as well, because, I mean, if the teachers are going off on stress leave because, you know, some children just really misbehave and, you know, a, a, a set policy uh, will also help them, will ease them, you know? I mean... Yeah, because they know what to do. They know right now they do. don't know what right to do. Right now they don't know what to do, you know? And, of course, they're stressed, right? So your next meeting, uh, and then where do, you, where do you hope that this will eventually end up what do you what, what well, I, I guess your end result I hope it will doesn't be. end up yeah. um, where I'd like for it to end up is to have a good relationship with the school board as well as our provincial government to be able to even even right now even to make small steps I've asked the president of the PTA like give us something the children are being bullied because of their clothes because not everybody can afford to wear Under Armour to school so maybe if we introduced a uniform it would alleviate some of that crossover of, of bullying. Um, you know, there's other things like, what about um, a theme song for schools or more crossover with sports activities? Those are little things. While we're addressing on the backside human rights, privacy policies, you know, how our children's, it's psychology. We have right now um, one psychologist per 500 people, social worker, our guidance counselor, and it should be one in 250. They're also responsible for addressing um, <clears throat> learning development problems like ADD, ADHD. So when it comes to the bully themselves, or the purple that's labeled as a bully, they actually don't have any support for corrective behavior in our system, mm -hmm. which we'd like to see have happen. Well, I want to thank you both very much for joining me this evening. All the best. Thank you for having us. We thank really appreciate the support. Very okay. much so.